Hello and welcome to Link Time Chat, episode 15. And we are doing a continuation of what we did in episode 14. That is, we are working on a, well, a language sketch for now. We haven't talked about how big this language is going to be. Um, but, you know, right now all we have are some some protoforms are running through sound rules that we created and we're getting ready to start, I think, introducing tone since that was actually the focus <laughs> for this whole language sketch anyway. And so, David, do you wanna say hello while I share the screen for future viewers to see? I suppose so. And was that it? Was that your hello? No, it's gonna come. It's going to come in time. It'll be the end of the episode. He'll finally say hello. Uh, <laughs> so as a reminder, last time um, I introduced a series of, um, I don't think I ever counted. I think there's like 12 roots here that um, I have put together because when we started the language, I came up with the sounds we were going to use, many of which I struggle with pronouncing myself. We had an awkward time of David trying to teach me how to pronounce an ejective P and it fell apart real quick. Uh, <laughs> and and um, I had put together a list of roots uh, for us to, to get started with. And then I handed over some of the decision, well, a lot of the decision-making to David to introduce some sound changes. We're kind of doing a pass and play situation here. Um, and we introduced nasal assimilation. Uh, so, you know, pretty, pretty standard, right? Where a nasal consonant just, you know, matches in place to, to a following consonant. Uh, uvular coloring, where uh, vowels are going to shift depending on uh, whether there's a uvular consonant around it. Post nasal voicing, so voiceless stops get, get voiced after a nasal. Uh, uvular velar merger, so uvulars are going to disappear and just become velar consonants. And finally, a low vowel dissimilation where um, we're going to have that, that low uh, sound becoming ah, uh, so it's going to kind of come forward. And so those were our sound changes. We also had decided, as I scroll quickly, up to tone, we're going to end up. And today we're going to kick off, I believe, with deciding where our tone is going to come from. Uh, but we will have register tone with two tone levels. And so altogether, there will be a high, low, and falling tonal melody. And um, those tones may be used grammatically. When we get to grammar, we'll figure that out. So that's where we are, David. We are. We're going to need to back up and take stock a little bit here. Uh, jump, if you would, to page two, where we have our IPA chart. Mm -hmm. um, first in the consonants, we have a blank palatal and blank glottal column. Yes. Do we want to keep them there? The only reason we had left them there was in case we end up introducing something where, for instance, an N followed by an E and then, you know, like in I vowel, are we gonna change it to a palatal or something? Now, it depends on whether or not we're going to introduce a lot more sound rules that would add sounds or if where we're gonna go with those phonological, uh, you know, phonological rules, where we're gonna go with it is more about getting the tone and actually reducing what we have. So I think it, that's really the only reason we kept them. Now, David just deleted the glottal column, which I think was a good decision because I can't imagine a glottal coming from nowhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think palatal is the only one that could be problematic. We'll hang on if... to it for the time being. Now, let's jump to the vowels. Mm -hmm. So what's written here doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think, okay, so just a second, I have another document. It does not match because there's supposed to be an at, and I think at the very end, I just didn't get everything updated. Oh my goodness, what happened? I don't know. David just inserted a question mark and then an omega symbol. He's all over the place in this document. I um, see that so this keyboard is not set up correctly. So it doesn't, 
the command key. Um, hold on one moment. Well, I can also enter IPA characters. And so that is totally doable. So right now. Well, the wrong, let, let's just put it this way. That ah shouldn't be in parentheses. It shouldn't be red. The other ah should be red. That ah should also be in the back column. And then we need an ah. And both of those yeah. things should be green. Um, but I, I I was gonna do it. I was gonna do it, I swear. I, I, I just uh, need to figure out this keyboard issue. It's, um, I, I, I need to flip the command key and the alt key, I think. I think that's what I need to do. I also uh, need to figure out what color of green I was using. None of those are right. Oh, just copy it. Um, so what had happened in the vowel section and for um, obviously if you're listening to this as it's released you're a patron which means you also have ac access to the um, PDF and so what yeah. you will see is that the central low vowel I had mistakenly left the central low vowel there added the back low vowel but put it in red and that was just all wrong. And so kidding. really don't know what, how I got the colors mixed up either, but that's okay. Um, so also I forget that in a table, you can't just hit equals as a first thing. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? It really is. Okay, so now our vowel chart is fixed. So our current vowel chart um, down the front, we have E, A, A. We only have a central schwa. And then down the back, we have U, O, A. So we have seven vowels, four of which are new vowels that were introduced through phonological changes. So the A, O, A, A have been, are the result of some phonological shifts. Okay, I've located the thing where I think I need to change it. I think I need to make that command. I need to make that option. And so let's we'll... see. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, I should also mention you won't <gasps> know this. Yeah, boy. I'm okay. Back. So David fixed his keyboard. Um, another thing that you're not going to know until the video is released at the end of our season mm -hmm. is that David is not wearing the tie dye shirt that was going to happen. There was a, a tragedy, but is instead wearing a defiant shirt um, in a pinkish color. And it, it's, it's got a great, I mean, like the, the graphic on the yeah. front is great of the character. Um, this, is, this is Kinsey. Kinsey so, is that character. And the actress is Nicole Galicia, who is the best. And yeah. also for anybody listening who has not seen Defiance, I highly encourage you to watch it. It was one of my favorite three shows that David has worked on. And I was very sad that it ended after three seasons because I really got into it. Me too. And in case okay. you're wondering, and I'm sure David knows this, Emerald City is in the top three. And of course, Motherland. <laughs> uh, so. Man, let me tell you, Penny Dreadful was amazing, but it is not your show. But nevertheless, <laughs> God, it was so good. Maybe someday so good. I'll get brave enough. Hmm. But I'm telling you, she, um, oh gosh, now I, I keep mixing up the name of the actress and the name of the character, but um, the main character, the actress, she should have been at least nominated for best actress every season and should have won it every season. It's thankful that she got at least one nomination, one Golden Globe uh, nomination. Anyway, it's just incredible. Okay, that is in order. That table is in order. Yes. Let us go back to 12 and 13. What I would love 
is to have my brain from last month uh -huh. remind me how I was planning to get tone into this. You know, that's a great question. Um, and even if you had some grand plan from last month, it could still change, obviously. So um, let's just go with how we're feeling today. We don't have a lot of coda consonants. Um, oh, oh, no, we that, actually that, do. It looks like we that, could have anything. That reminds me, um, this, um, this isn't fully thinged yet, is it? Because it, it's now going to become uh, uh, ing -gok, ing -gok, right? This bottom one? Right, okay, right. So David was pointing out that one of our examples, um, well, we also still have a Q above. I just don't know that we, we fully did the merger yet. Um, no, we or didn't. we just, we have another Q too. We have, we have a lot of Qs. Okay, let's, um, let's, well, let's, let's, let's at least ferret those out since we're pretty happy with those sound changes. Um, so we can right. at least get a better idea what we are working with. So right now I'm changing all of the uvulars to velars. Um, and it's important to note that this has happened after the uvular coloring. Uh, and so what that means is that you will have a distinction where you didn't previously between two vowels right after the exact same consonants. We we don't have any examples yet, but um, we could, you know. Um, actually. Let's throw in one just for funsies. Wouldn't this be Sally up here? Yeah, we. That's that's the other thing we need to do, right? Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. And this would be at K and not a K. Yes. Okay, yeah, so we did not go all through the all ads. the changes. I no. think all we made it through was nasal assimilation <laughs> and voicing. Yeah. Um, we did not make it to the uvular velar merger or the low vowel dissimilation rules uh, to apply them to the roots. And so we still have ho. And this is, this is this is this is sounding very interesting. I like this. Well, um, that's that's really good. High vowels become mid vowels after uvular consonants. Oh yes, so the high vowels come down. That's how we got that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I look at our I look at our little tiapu here. We we could get us get ourselves some uh, uh, palatals if we like a, if we like desire. a chapu or something. Yeah, a little chapu. chapu, I should say. Little, little chapu. <laughs> Would you like some more gruel, sir? That's all right, chapu. I'm feeling okay. Oh, my word. Bless um, you, sir. So, yeah, we do, have, we do have some opportunities to potentially introduce um, some more sounds that we don't yet have listed in the IPA chart on the first page. Um, and wow, um, Nutzia is now Nutzia. Yeah, this is becoming very Finnic, uh, which I like uh, because, you know, I, I, I love Finnish. Um, because, yeah, uh, Nutzia is definitely a Finnish like word, except that it wouldn't be Nutzia, it would be Nutzia, you know, with a front nice. vowel, uh, Nutzia. Yeah. Um, so have we killed our central vowels yet? We have a schwa. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. Well, I, I campaigned to keep the schwa. That was an agreement that you were totally, totally on board with last month. What happened? That, that was me last month. I mean, you can't, you can't trust me last month. That's, why why do we need to kill a schwa? I was being inf afflicted by March madness. That's still <laughs> no reason that you can't keep let a schwa me, in one language. Let me paint you a picture of a beautiful future where we have a language, a register tone language, 
with palatal consonants and ejectives and vowel harmony. Oh, you want vowel harmony, which would effectively kill a schwa. The I'm schwa, so excited about this. The schwa would be sacrificed for vowel harmony. All right. It what direction are die. we doing, Val? What, what direction? Live on. Uh, I was thinking, um, I was thinking uh, left to right, which would mean that we would need to find something to do with stressed schwa. But that's, uh, or like, you know, word initial schwa, basically schwa where it doesn't come in front of a vowel. But we can do something about that. I think we can come up with just a little little snipsy of something to do with that. That'll be fun. I'm trying not to <laughs> seize in my schwa estate. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, so if you did want to do vowel harmony from left to right, okay, so the first word that we come to on our list, because we obviously we haven't decided what we're doing with a schwa in a word like po yet, because the schwa is the only vowel there. We haven't decided that. Um, the next word on our list is exit, and they're both front vowels. I'm assuming vowel harmony. Were you thinking front to back, or were you thinking how would the vowels harmonize? Well, right now I was just thinking that schwa would realize in different ways depending on what came before it. But then you have all of these diphthongs, mm -hmm. and that needs to something needs to be done with them. Because we do have this word where we have an a u uh -huh. diphthong to create a I <laughs> uh -huh. Did I say that diphthong appropriately? Uh, well, I'm 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 having ideas. You're not gonna like it. <laughs> I, like I, you can't introduce something like that. You you have to try to sell it first. You can't be like, oh, you're gonna hate this. Let me tell you. Jesse, you're going to hate this. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's the worst way. Gonna, worst way to introduce anything. I'm going to write some stuff down here. Okay. And I'm going to read everything he writes to you and try to show my level of discontent through the amount of sighing that I do as I read. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right now. It looks like we're potentially going to be introducing um, some opposite rounding in terms of, because normally the front vowels right are unrounded, back vowels are more likely to be rounded. And it looks like David is potentially introducing some rounded front. So au to become u. Did you type anything after the A combination? No, uh, no I'm okay. just thinking. I'm just thinking. That was the Five well, minutes. so that was the first one. The second one is A yeah, uh, becoming O. A yeah, becoming A. What was that? And, and now we have I, I, I. You know, just like the, the finished diphthong with the AI, not the A double dot I, I, lion and then, uh, what, what's that, what's that, what's that guy's name? What's the guy's name that I, I really like that, that guitarist from Sonata Arctica, whose career I now follow because he's kind of a genius. That I love dude. that you think I remember his name. I remember talking about him. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, You know, the best part when I was working at a music store was when people would come in and there'd be, they'd be like, I want the, the you know, at that point, CDs, right? I, I want that yeah. CD by the new artists they're playing on the radio. Mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't help. And so then, you know, you like, you try to get information and they're like, you know, and then they try to hum it and they're like, like me and can't hum to save their lives. 
Um, and it, it becomes a great guessing game. You're a great hummer. There's no way you could identify a song that I was trying to get you to identify by me humming. How about, uh, give me a, a song that you know I know and then hum it. How about we figure out what's happening to this dip song? <laughs> I will, after you do this. First of all, that puts a lot of pressure on me. Mm -hmm. And I don't work right. well under pressure. You excel in pressure. Everybody knows that about you. I'm very curious. Did you look up the guitarist's name? I did. And it is? Yanni Lee Matoinen. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would never have remembered that first. Second, the way I would have pronounced it to you would have been so butchered that you would have had no idea what I was saying. You know, the reason that I know how to pronounce this is because I listen to a lot of people whose native languages are, fin are Finnish singing English. And mm -hmm. their pronunciation of our I diphthong, so you know, is so unique. It's because like in their minds, they have two of those diphthongs. Neither of them is the English one. And they slot it to the back one instead of the front one, which I think is odd because I think ours is more forward than theirs. But mm -hmm. it, it, it's really obvious like when you hear them saying things like there's this one song, I forget what the song is, where the band is. It's a female singer. I think it might be Amberian Dawn, but where she says the, the she says by my side, and you know that's how we say it in English, except in hers it sounds by my side, and it's like very obvious. Like it's so, it's just like you have to pull the vowel back a little bit, and it's so strange. And you know this is why. Anyway, so yeah, Yanni me Um And there is this great author whose name is um, and the only reason I know how to say his name is because I found a YouTube video dedicated to how to say his name. Oh. Literally the entire YouTube video is somebody just saying it over and over again so that way you could learn. And um, can you say it again? Oh, and I'll even write it. Okay. So, whoops, if I could spell correctly. Um, just a second. Um, there we go. Um, oops, I think I forgot. Oh, I was closing my eyes during part of it because like I typed it so many times while I was working on one project that like I remember like my finger memory is better than remembering how to spell it. Same thing I do when I type phone numbers because I like try to memorize people's phone numbers in case, you know, I don't know, I have to call them from a phone that's not my own. And yeah. there are so many times when I can't tell you what the number is, but I, I can press it out on a keypad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Mihai yeah. Csikszent Mihai, and he's um, Hungarian American, and he writes incredible yeah. books on psychology of things like creativity and flow and things like that. It's really incredible books, but um, all nonfiction. Um, nice. But yeah, I had to look up how to, how to say his name. Yeah. You can tell with that SZ, it's somewhere over in, in Hungary and the CS as well. Um, anyway, so, um, you know, wake me up before you go, go. Of course. Hum the chorus. <laughs> First, do you want to talk about what that song makes me think of? I do. You're... <laughs> Okay, so just when anybody thought maybe I may have good taste in movies and our music. <laughs> it makes me think of the movie Zoolander. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Orange mocha frappuccino. Um, because that song is playing up until the explosion. Um, but anyway. <laughs> uh I honestly, though, that was one of the biggest surprise laughs for me uh, in that movie that I can remember and I'll always remember. I was just watching that at a friend's house. I never saw it in the theater, but it's just where they they come to that dance floor. They're on the second floor 
And it's like, we have everything we need to, you know, undo you. And they're all in this computer right here. And then they throw it as if it was just going to explode and reveal all the secrets. Uh, oh my God. Uh, I, I yeah, so the movie it. is so stupid, it's funny, right? And I actually saw it in the theater with my friend Rodney right before I moved to Germany for a year. And while I was in Germany, he surprised me by FedExing the DVD when it came out to Germany. <laughs> so I could have it on DVD and remember our night together. <laughs> so, nice. oh God, did you really want to like assault people's eardrums when they're supposed to be listening to us? And this is supposed to be a perk. Do it with me. Of being a mm -hmm. patron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I go much faster. So okay, go for it. Go it. for it. <laughs> I apologize in advance. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all you get. Okay. That that was fine. No. It what was wrong? Anyway, that was fine. Let's what talk was wrong about with that? Let's talk what about this. What was wrong with that? <laughs> what was wrong with that? That was fine. Let's talk about this dip song. Who hurt you, Jesse? I just don't get you. That's not true, I do. Okay, so um, here is here's what I'm thinking. The reason why I wanted to get rid of these diphthongs is because they offer, they, it's like they, they're a little bit problematic when it comes to assigning values to things down the line. The nice thing about Finnish vowel harmony is that they just have two sets of vowels, you know, and so the I and E are completely neutral and don't matter. Um, and you might be wondering what happens if the first vowel of the word is I or E. And you might be interested to know, most of the time it's front vowels, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. Very surprising. Anyway, um, so I wanted to get rid of these diphthongs. The thing is when I hear, when I think about how are we getting rid of this diphthong, you know, as in, you know, lima tainen, tainen, the the first thing that comes to mind is that lima um, just make it a long vowel. Mm -hmm. It's not super satisfying, but you know. I mean, yeah. Thing. Yeah, like mm. it's either that or a. I don't know. And then we have all of these on glides, and we can talk about those separately. We will need to figure out that and that. But so specifically, we need to talk about anytime a U or an I comes first in the diphthong, and we've got yeah, we've got we. And so you. It, it could be. Mm -hmm. We could get that. What do you think? So um, obviously introducing the, the W and the Y. So mm -hmm. we could definitely have, and I'm trying to just see, because the only other one we have is yeah. So I, a. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, those could be. I know, I'm just looking across the board to see what other combos we had in the roots. Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm totally on board with saying we have a we and a you instead of we and you. Okay, basically this is just introducing these guys as phonemes. Uh, so if it, a you or an I comes in initial position in like a diphthong, it just resolves as either what or yeah, respectively. So that solves that. This makes me a little uncomfortable because suddenly the only long vowel we have is ah, mm -hmm. and it comes from a diphthong. We don't have long vowels otherwise. Um, for parallelism, you would think that that would become um, uh. In other words, uh, you would think that it would become um, 
believe this is called Ram's Horn. I never know what that's called. Um, okay, so at this point, you have three options down for the I, I uh -huh. a, a, and that one is the uh. Where does that, that's the back unrounded? Yes, uh, uh, close, uh. Uh, close mid unrounded. Okay. Yes, okay, because it would be opposite the, the O, right? Yeah. So it's O and U. Yeah, O and U, and I feel pretty good about that. But then A and A, A. I don't really. Mm. So, would you feel good about having both the front and the back at the mid level with the the opposite rounding? Because we would then have A I, I, O. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you'd feel comfortable with that? I would, yeah. Okay. I've done it before. Mine come out as pretty much the same thing. <laughs> what? Really? I mean- The unrounded very... front and the, or sorry, the rounded front and the unrounded back at that A and O level. But they couldn't be more different e e versus uh, 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 totally. Yeah. They they couldn't be more different. You're right. It's not like they could be at like a different vowel height as well or something. I mean, we could go with something completely radical. I mean, but we'd have to really tap into, you know, we'd have to tap tap into our inner essence and say, what do we feel from this? Like, do we have an example of this diphthong right now? In one of our words? Is it... Yeah, we don't, we need, to, we need to come up with one. Introducing a new root so... and that is my job. So you just hang on. Oh, it is? Yikes. Totally so my do. job. Okay. I don't know what you think you're doing. Oh, wait a minute. Um, it's just uvular coloring. Um, high vowels become mid vowels after uvular consonants. Only uvulars, not just all ejectives, right? Yeah, it has nothing to do with the ejective. Got it. Okay, cool. Cool. All good. All good. So I need to make sure that I have a uvular. Just a second. And I'm trying to room. Are you nervous? I'm so excited. Okay. And I was double checking a couple things. Um, and it needs to be, we need a uvular follow. So I, I chose just the Q for now. Okay. Um, oh, actually, wait. We had only, oh, we had already introduced a G somewhere. So we're good, we're good. Um, and it needed to be a non-high vowel, which means the only non-high vowel in the proto form would be a schwa. Mm -hmm. The A and the O only come from, oh, I could have had an, uh, do we, do we want the, we just need one of the central vowels, either the schwa or the, the low. What happens to the schwa? High vowels, the schwa become, high vowels become mid vowels after you view their consonants while non-high vowels merges off. I'm sorry, you're right. It could very well be schwa. My apologies, my sincere apologies. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the schwa because huh. I'm gonna put as many schwas in as I can while I can, mm -hmm. obviously. Use your time. What's that? Use your time. <laughs> yes. Um, and 
I'm missing something. Missing something. I mean, the whole reason that we're doing this, right, is for that diphthong. I know. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I forgot. I was so I was working ahead on whether I wanted a one syllable or a two syllable. But I think I'll leave it one syllable, keep it nice and short. And we have. All right, so then. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's that's my pronunciation. Yeah. Well, Becoming. Claim. Becoming. Claim. Kine. Becoming Kine. something. Okay. Kine. 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 I think we should Where just keep that diphthong. Because I know you love diphthongs. But like then it would be the only one. It's special. Kong. 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 Yeah, we have. Uh... No, that's the other one. Town. Done, done, done. There. Uh, okay, well, we need to write this up as a sound change if we're going to do it anyway. Um, we could say that the I was so strong that it resisted. But in that case, I would think the all is so strong it shouldn't go to O. Okay. What are your thoughts on that, Missy? I like it. All right. I, I like a good diphthong every now and then. There's nothing good about these. Let's make that clear. You're making me get rid of the schwa. They're vile and dirty diphthongs. That's why I like them. <laughs> OK. Um, we're going to call this new rule diphthong simplification. And we are fully simplifying two diphthongs to a monophthong. So O yes. and A becoming E and A respectively. Um, and then our we and you diphthongs are just becoming we and you, which while you're typing the diphthong simplification i'm going to hop up to page two and put in a w and a j in the chart yes still pretty curious oh yeah it's because it's a green that's not on there interesting oh no I, oh, I know what happened. Never mind. I know what happened with <laughs> the green. The what? So, do you know? Okay. You know that I started taking notes for what I wanted to do with the sound charts and everything in just a regular pages document that I kept for myself. Yeah. And you know that when I start a pages document from my own, from my own account, I get a different color palette than you do because I have my whatever makes it so I have my pink color palette. Yeah. So my color options for text are different from what is available in a document started by you. Mm -hmm. This document is your template. Therefore, it was started by you. Therefore, Ooh. all of the colors are different, but I copied and pasted the IPA charts over once I made them. That's why the greens are not aligning and why I have to just copy and paste them. That's what's going on. And you everyone also now is the copy. The copy style. I know. I could, but <laughs> it works, David. <laughs> it does work. Okay. All right, let's uh, now that we have some sound changes actually written out, let us apply. Do you want to say them. this becomes a W instead of a U? 
What? What what did I do? You said the high vowels I and you become J and U when they occur. No, I didn't. And so I just changed it. And so it says W. Yes, what I've highlighted, I typed. I just changed that. You can't prove it. <laughs> okay. Undo. Look at that. Undo. Look what happened. Oh no. Don't change redo. Me. Oh don't, don't try to pretend like I'm not finding mistakes you make too. <laughs> oh. It wasn't a mistake. It was a little mistake. See, tiny little baby mistakelet. A mistakelet. That's so cute. <laughs> okay. Oh, that also means I need to add the vowels up top. Because, well, not vowels. I'm sorry. One vowel. <laughs> Yes. I need to add up top. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to, of course, first try, remember how to make, there we go. <laughs> Second try, I remembered how to make the correct IPA symbol. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. And so now David is updating our roots to take care of these diphthongs. And okay. I'm doing a sneeze, I'm doing a sneeze. <laughs> Holy crap, hola, are you still attached? I'm very sorry. You shouldn't be sorry. Like I'm just concerned that like something came loose in that sneeze, everything okay? Yeah, yeah, poor little Roman. He's so tired that he turned to look at me, you know, in a very disgusted way, but couldn't manage to open his eyes. So he was looking at me with his eyes closed. Totally understandable. He's so okay, cute. so now he's fallen asleep as he's looking at me. By the way, we now have um, suat became swat. <laughs> mm hmm. Swat. <laughs> and I love it. You got to have a little more swat when you say it. <laughs> what does my tattoo say? Swat. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. So we have retained two diphthongs, much to David's chagrin, but we yes. do still have the schwa's in there. Over and my objection. You want. Yeah, we're going to get rid of those schwas now. You want vowel harmony of some type? Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll okay. Be fun. Now, is this a decision that we need to make before we start talking about tones and where they come from? Or are we going to morph both conversations together? No, it'll make life a little easier, I think. It'll make life a little, a little simpler if we take care of this now. So we could say, we will choose a tonic vowel in the diphthong. That tonic vowel will by default be a not high vowel. If there's only two high vowels, then the one that remains will be the tonic vowel. And that this, uh, this uh, errant schwa will become You know, we could go nuts and spread the rounding too. So schwa would become um, a after e and o after back vowels. Okay, and so specifically but right a now after a. Right now, the cursor no. is on the example. Um, we're currently at the form weemba mm -hmm. with it. And so what would happen here would be weembe. Yeah, and I, and I, and I, I what I was thinking was too silly. I think it should be um, e or o, and that's it. Okay. And when we have an example like po, what happens? 
that is something that we must decide. Um, Aren't you glad so I made be... sure that I put a root in there that only had a schwa? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's something you're going to have to deal with eventually, so you might as well just do it right off the bat. Tub or pole? Pull. 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 What does that? What does that feel like? It's going to change to you. Pull. 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 To me, it would be pill. Got it. Beep. And there it beeps. You know, I got to go get rid of the schwa. You just need to make it red. That's all. Okay. Oh, wait. You tell me to copy style. You know what? That is too much work. I'm just going to do what I know how to do. Okay. Was the... The I was originally in the language. I don't know why I put it in parentheses, but that was in the original. Yeah. I'm taking out of parentheses because that was in our original vowel inventory. Didn't I start with four vowels? Uh, yes. Okay, it's fixed now. Okay. And we'll make sure it's known that it's David's central vowel annihilation. It's a mutual decision. <laughs> that we're both very happy with. As I just look at David. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard to I can't write a rule for this, so I'm just gonna do it in words. Well uh becomes eh after front vowels. Oh after back vowels and And eh, when it's on its lonesome. <laughs> on its lonesome, not by its lonesome? Thank you. Like, is that a dialectal thing or does that feel better no. for you? No, it's when it's on its own. Uh, okay. Uh, on its own, by its lonesome. I just mixed that up. No, it sounded weird to me too. Um, <clears throat> What do you think is uh, more central to the <clears throat> to the schwa-ness of the schwa? It's lack of rounding or it's height? For me, it's lack of rounding because I think in general, at least I know from my own <laughs> pronunciation, my schwas kind of go all over the place depending on well, the I environment mean, is around it and it's still a schwa to me, but it's always unrounded. So then do you think then it makes more sense for it to become ah than o? Oh? Gotcha. So in an example like, oh, we don't have one, do we? No. Uh, so here, let me, well, do you want to do one? You can, I will allow you one. Oh, thank you. There's a nice, easy one. Hola. Um, except the O would never be in a proto form. Hola. This is why you're not allowed. <laughs> I tried. I don't try it, I don't fail. Okay. <laughs> okay, and so Ula would either become Ulo or ula. ula. Oh yeah, uh, I want it to be ah. Uh. You got it. Then. There we are. Da, da, da. Okay, and 
in a situation like, let's just create a very similar protoform to one we had just done, adding a schwa behind it. In a situation like the resulting form of kaima, where we have that diphthong, this is where you would said, so we, we have the diphthong that goes from back to front. And so the other diphthong won't be a problem because it just stays back. And so that's fine. So au is all back. When we go ai though, we're gonna stick with the a. That was the, that initial discussion that you had had, right? About um, the salient. Yeah, the tonic, the tonic. The tonic, vowel. not salient. Okay. Kaima, kaima, yeah, kaima. Yeah, that song. All right, Ooh. good. Don't you like that little dip song there? Well, because it reminds me of Finnish, but it does offend me, yeah. Good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Goal complete. Okay, so we have that. Do you want to talk momentarily about, and I'm trying to find our examples here, um, where we have examples like tiapu, where we have a T followed by a palatal glide. And then um, we also have down here, nuts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> do have yeah. that. Um, where we have the TS followed by that palatal glide. Um, and I think those are the, the two big ones that we have right now. We could of course have a lot of other examples, uh, but specific, to these, are are we going to expand our palatal repertoire? Yeah, because the thing is, you know what that says to me? It says to me that we could potentially be distinguishing between palatal stops and alveopalatal aggregates. So instead <laughs> of, oh, okay, okay. Tiapu so it's like muta. tiapu would become tapu like that? Tapu. That, that's totally what I said. Really? It's not what I heard. You might have done it better than me. And so it just sounded, <laughs> sounded super stoppy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So would tiapu become tiapu or chapu? It really sounds like you're saying tapu. Tapu? No, tiapu. Totally have my tongue hitting the middle of my palate, middle of my tongue, middle of my palate, tapu. It doesn't sound like it at all. It sounds like you're saying tapu. I think you need to get your hearing corrected. Dang. Can I do that? Can you go and get your hearing corrected? I would love that. You know, a little, little tweak here, a little tweak there. Yeah. Okay, tapu and nucha. Uh. Or we could just say they merge. <clears throat> I think they should merge. You are the Jesse. Mainly because I apparently can't say how it stops. <laughs> No, I mean, you're probably doing it right. It's probably a, a, an acoustic thing. And... I'm gonna, do you put the affricates under stops? Um, yeah. Oh, you don't have the symbol. Gotcha. Uh, this would, of course, mean we would eventually find that form. Okay. So the ch and the j are now possible. Would we have a nasal n? Would you do the same with the n? Like if it were nyambo. Yep, I would. I would. Okay. Whoop, wrong in, wrong in. <laughs> Just 
because it takes me a while to remember keystroke combinations. And we would also do the same with Mr. Fricative. Ah, uh, with the show. Okay. Done. So now we have a palatal series. Yeah, there we go. And of course, everybody knows that I really like palatal series because that means I can say my name. I totally put Jesse in this language. That's true. Not really, it would have to be Chessy, but you know. You know. We only get the voice ones after nasals. Well, I would like to lengthen my name to Ingesi. <laughs> <laughs> we, would, uh, we would have to have some rule that deleted nasals before voice stops. And then some rule that also deleted initial vowels for some reason. All so I can get <laughs> mm -hmm. what I want. Um, okay. How, how are you feeling? I, I really like what we're doing. I just know that we were supposed to do tone. And now I'm trying to figure out how to do it. We, okay. So first of all, you know, my Zoom doesn't tell me how long we've been recording because why would it? Um, That's okay. Where I are we? Uh, oh, we're over, we're over time. Already? Oh, yeah. We've gone over an hour? Oh, you, I'm sorry. We've gone over an hour, but not actually over an hour recording. We have three minutes. Okay. Oh, it's One, so we can figure out three, tone in three minutes. Three. That's right. Um, okay, so this is also, though, I think, yet another reminder of why conlanging with a particular goal in mind still takes time to build up to said goal. You don't just sit down and hit the goal on your first go. <laughs> We're getting there. We will make it to tone. Do you have any ideas that you are currently favoring for sources of tone? Um, and again, we need a high, low, and eventually a falling. Yeah, so my thought was, you know, just target those codas. Mm -hmm. um, uh, clearly the stops can all go and they can leave high tone in its wake. We could have a stress system here and then have it be a combination of a loss of some codas, but also, um, the, uh, also the tone, I'm sorry, also the stress itself. Um, I don't know if I want to lose those nasal codas. Mixture of stress and codas. But I do feel like the loss of the stops will give us high tone. Okay. Nasal codas, I feel like they're going to give us low. Same thing with the liquid codas. So like I'm looking at Bell. Okay. All right, so those are some initial ideas. Yeah, um, and then I just don't feel like we have to lose those liquid nasal codas. They could leave a low trace, but still be there. And maybe objectives um, giving us low, I forget. Ah, oh, shoot, that one I'm gonna have to look up if objectives are associated with lower high tone. So having an onset as an adjective? Yeah. So an adjective onset leaves a trace. That may be wrong though. Maybe. <laughs> Not sure what tone. Ah, I've lost my ability to type. 
Oh, look at this. This is, um, I pulled up a UC Berkeley um, dissertation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know who this is. Uh, John Kingston, I don't know who that is, but I do know the committee of John O'Halla, who was my professor, Johanna Nichols, who I know well. And I do know the last name, Stereotti. I don't remember, I can't read the first name, I don't remember it. But this is a dissertation all about velar ejectives. I think. And just on the adjectives or like connection to other features or? The phonetics and phonology of the timing of oral and glottal events. This is from 1984. Hmm. Or actually 83, but I don't know all the signatures from 84. One is from 85. Um, John O'Hala took a long time to approve it, which, you know, makes sense. Oh, and look, there's John O'Hala's signature. Wow. Oh, he was a wonderful professor. I'm gonna miss him. I really wish I could have, uh, I really wish I could have seen him one more time. Anyway, um, okay, so, uh, so yeah, I wanna look up, I, I just feel like the adjective onsets could do something with our tone. I just don't know what, um, but something that shakes it out from whatever the status quo is. I feel like it could do that. Uh, I'm just not sure. Okay. We're gonna leave that note there. Um, yeah. I'm also going to make this some color <laughs> to set nice. it apart. Yeah, I like this color. That's a good color. Um, well, thank you, thank you. I chose it myself. <laughs> um, and then when we pick up next month, maybe in month three installment of this series, we'll actually maybe actually hit tone. Like, I don't know how many more times I can hedge that um, because I really thought we were gonna do tone this time. <laughs> So maybe it will be likely that we will have the opportunity <laughs> to start tone in episode 16. May it be. <laughs> Love it. Um, excellent. Well, I'm going to stop sharing screen. Okay. And uh, we have our final words of wisdom pre-prepared. Yeah. Why is that even a thing? If you prepare it, then it's ahead of time. Why do you pre-prepare something? Uh, to indicate that, you know, you prepared it ahead of time. I prepared it before preparing it. Um, and, and, and those wise words from David are? Look at every angle of every decision you are ever going to make and then bend them. He's also sitting back like he's a wise, wise sage, nodding very wisdomly. Um, I, I wisdomly. appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far of us doing the, this playing around with another language sketch. And I know I'm excited to see how this actually shakes out once we start doing something with tone and we can start building from there. Again, if there's any specific suggestions or questions you have that you want us to explore in this kind of language innovation, through podcastery, uh, then let us know, put it in Discord server. We've got that area for ideas. And if you are a patron, but you're not on Discord, uh, you can of course email us or message us in other ways. So um, feel free to let us know if there's something specific you want us to explore as we work on this. And as ever, we thank you for your patronage and we look forward to continue providing content for you and stay grammar.
and see you next time. Thank you.